Hi guys, this is Tracy from Livinia Stamps and I am here to talk about a brand new product. We have our lovely Denkles that we have just launched and we are super excited about them. The colours are amazing. Um, they are a powdered ink, okay, so you, all you need to do is add a little bit of water to them, treat them like watercolour paints, but they are super vivid. You can also add them uh, being dry, you can add them to your acrylic paints, you can add micas to them, there's lots of different things that we can use them for. Not only that, we have got a pigment powder with these. This is a white pigment powder that you can add these lovely colours to which will make them semi-opaque. So it'll work quite nicely on darker card as well. So um, we are going to be doing lots and lots of samples with them throughout the next few weeks just to introduce you to these beautiful colours and you get to see what you can actually do with them. So um, moving on, we're now going to do some demonstrations. So first of all, I'm going to do a technique using the texture paste to give you this, this kind of effect. It's a three dimensional paste. You let that dry and then you simply put the dinkles over the top, spritz with some water, and you can get some fabulous effects. I've got the texture paste here, I've got my palette knife, and if you just pick a stencil of your choice, I'm gonna pop that over. This is watercolor card, this is one of our tags, but you can do this on anything. So, paste is quite heavy, so I would go with a, a good sort of thick card. I'm going to just go over the top and you can see how easy that is. So make sure you pop that in some water because it's a little bit more tricky to get off once the texture paste has dried. So I will put that to the side for 10 minutes and let that dry off. However, I have already done some. So I can show you straight away the effects. Let's use that one first. And we're going to pick a couple of colours. Literally just tap that over the top. And you can see how fine that powder is, which makes it really easy to dissolve and give you these lovely colours. So you can see how it sits in um, um, between that stencil, between the paste. And once that dries off, it will look stunning. Okay, I'm going to pop that to the side to dry. And let's just pick another colour. So we've got some magenta here. And what other colour? We've got burnt orange. And lime divine. I'm just being very random in what I'm picking here. A little bit of chilli gel. Let's have a go. Beautiful, vibrant colours that work so well together. And again, you can see that background. Just pop that to the side. Got another one here. Let's go with some amethyst. And a little bit of pink. And what colour shall we have? A little bit of pine green. There we go. And again. A 
beautiful colours working so nice together there. Kind of looks like stained glass windows, doesn't it? It's that kind of effect. Really pretty. And I've got one last one here now. Just to give you an idea of how the colours work together. So let's put some burgundy on. And put some yellow. and some sea blue let's have a look doesn't take much to give you that lovely vibrant colours okay so again you can see how it just sits in between What a great effect and so quick and easy to achieve. As I've shown you the denkles are reacted to water so we can put that straight onto the watercolour card. You can use it on the multifarious as well. So I'm literally just going to sprinkle some of these straight onto the card just to give you an idea of what that comes out like. A nice, quick, easy background. You know when sometimes you're faced with just that white card and you don't know where to begin? Something like this makes it really quick and achievable. Now, if you just stamped something silhouette over the top of that, that would make your magical background there. And also we can add colour. So if we wanted to add a little bit more, we can bring that in at any point. Even when these are dry, you can still add a little bit more colour. It's just giving it a little bit more vibrancy. And say if we maybe want a little bit more yellow at the top. Again, making that a little bit brighter again. So just pop that to the side, let that dry, and we'll use this as uh, one of our cards. Now you can either put the powders on dry, or you can damp the card down. And we can just start adding colour straight onto it. Let it do its own thing. That gives an amazing effect in itself. Almost looks like it's been marbled. We can spritz it down just to give us a little bit more movement. Or you can add some more colour. And suddenly it just starts changing completely. Look at those colours. I'm going to stop there because I really like that as it is now. I'm going to put that to the side again. So the watercolour card is great for this because I can really throw some water at it first before adding the dinkles. a little bit of depth down at the bottom here just 
just let it run and let it do its own thing. It's all so easy. And if you let that dry off a bit, we can add a little bit of water over the top, which will actually take the colour out. So I'll show you now. So this is just water and I've got my fan brush here. I've also got a piece of kitchen towel that I'll just keep to the side if I need it. And then I'm going to simply just tap the water over the top. Now the longer you leave it, the more the colour will bleach out. So I'm just doing it little by little. And you can see there how the colour has bleached out and that's just the water being flicked over the top. Okay, so another thing we can use the dinkles with is the gel press. So I've got that just here. And then let's give that a bit of a clean. And what I'll do first is just ink up the elements for the background. So I've got Lime Punch here. This is a really good base layer which will give the, um, the dinkles a really nice movement when we pop them onto the gel press. Got all colours here. And all I've done is put a very small amount into the pixie cups and then topped it with water. And I'm going to add some of these lovely colours. So get a nice fine speckle and that should give us that really nice sort of organic background. as well. And let's see what that comes out like. Now this is the multifarious card. Let's put that on. Smooth over. And let's see what we've got. Wow, how quick and easy is that? And just look at those colours. And that just depends on the, the, uh, the way you splash it on the gel press. So if you've got large droplets and a lot of water, you get a more smooth finish. Whereas if you've got tiny, tiny dots, you get that sort of organic finish. So let's put that to the side and let's do another one. This time we will ink up in the graphite. So a darker background. And let's see what this comes out like. So I tap off first and then you can get those smaller little spatters over the top. And we'll 
go for a little bit of amethyst. And let's see what that gives us. So again, I'm using the multifarious card. Give that a smooth over. Let's see what we get. Wow. Another amazing organic background there. So those two are off the gel press using the Denkles. Great backgrounds for stamping silhouette images over the top. So let's do something with a stencil again. Let's pop that over the top. And I've got the Distress Glaze this time. Using one of the stencil brushes, I'm going to pick up some of that Distress Glaze and I'm going to go just in that sort of swirling motion now this by right should resist the water so I'm going to pop the dinkles over the top spritz with it and I'm hoping That you'll see the pattern come through so let's have a go okay and there we go that's worked a treat So just dab any excess off, but you can see how it's resisted. And of course we can add more colour down there if we wish, so we can actually fill that with some colour. to dry and decide what we're going to do with it when it's dry because as you know when you leave something to dry it always looks totally different to when it's wet so I'll be interested to see what that looks like I'm going to try that again with a different stencil so distress glaze And it is just about experimenting with these things. We've got so many things in our craft stash, so just get them out and get playing. Okay, let's see what this looks like now. Okay, I can just about see the pattern there. So we're gonna go with some of the periwinkle and let's go with a bit of chilli like I'm cooking and maybe a bit of pine green down at the bottom there you can always add more like I say wow that's come out really lovely again Now we can either let that just dry or we can dab up those, all that excess water on it. And then decide what we're going to do with that when we've finished. 
What a great background. So I am going to leave these to dry and then we're going to come back and create some magic. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so I am back to show you all the cards now they're dry. We've got some fantastic backgrounds using different techniques. The colours are absolutely stunning. Um, I'm going to pick a couple now. Which one? We'll start with that one. And I'm going to start with our lovely fairy. So let's pop her onto the block and then inking up in the nocturne. This is the smaller fairy. And then we'll pop her around about there. Give that a good press down. And there she is. Okay. I'm going to use a mask just to ground her. I'm going to pop that there and then taking my stencil brush. And I want to pick a dark colour. So this, this one is midnight blue. So I need it to be quite dark. So that she really does look like she's standing on the hill there. So her feet almost blend in with that colour. There we go. And that's another little trick that's really effective is by using our moon mask I'm going back to the midnight blue just to, for that sort of dramatic feel but you can use whichever colour you like as long as it's darker than the one underneath and that way we can it will really stand out. I'm just working my way around the edge And if you want more of a defined line, I'm going to take a smaller stencil brush just to go around the very edge. And this just defines that line, making it nice and sharp. Just depends on the effect that you want. You can see how that really does make that stand out now, it almost looks three dimensional. So, I'm going to put some foliage down the sides now. So, if you haven't got these stamps that I'm using, don't worry, you can use other foliage. All we want to do is just create a frame around her. So I'm inking up in twilight now, which is a really lovely colour. It's sort of a, a navy blue. fingerprint there so I'm going to have to pop another one just over the top of that to hide it. There we go. And then we'll bring something up from the bottom here. Use this one. favourite stamps. 
I use time and time again. It's just got a really nice shape to it. And works so well when you repeat it over and over. So I've got a black posca here, I'm just going to pop a little of that on the, the mat and then using a nice fine brush, just going to pick a little of that up and just darken the fairy a bit. Because I'm stamping onto watercolour card, it's always that little bit more fibrous. So if it does miss a bit, just use your Posca pen, a little bit of water and a good paintbrush. And just fill in any areas that you want to cover. I'm going back to the Midnight Blue and I'm going to bring in a little bit of depth around the edge now. And this just pulls your eye into the centre even more. colours here. Let's go with the mermaid first. Just feel I need to bring a little bit of blue in as well. And then I'm going to move on to the dark denim, which is darker again than the midnight blue. So it's just about layering your colour, building that depth up gradually. Don't be tempted to do it all at once. And now I want something very, very faintly in the background. So again, I'm going back to the twilight. I'm going to ink up, make sure it's the right way, stamp off, and then just a couple of times, like so. And then we'll just finish off with some glitter. We've got sea foam. But if you haven't got this one, you can use any other colours. What I'm going to do is apply the pressure and just take that down the page. So we're just sweeping it down. It's not going to be a perfect line. And you don't want a perfect line, you just want little bits of it. I'm hoping you can see that under the camera there. Oops, okay that to the side and now we're going to go and use the rose gold. So I'm going to do a similar thing and just 
little bits coming up from the bottom there and that just simply adds a little bit of magic down at the bottom and there we have it so a really nice I think that was a fairly quick card to make because I'd already got the background that I'd used the denkles from. I hope you enjoyed that guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will do some more this week. I'll pick another card that we made using the denkles so you can see what else that I create using them. Okay, thanks very much guys. You take care and I'll see you soon.